Welcome back. Having career as a pro basketball player has been a challenge for Crystal Thomas, but that doesn't begin to compare to what she overcame as a child. For more on her story, we bring in Cheers to Susel. Yeah, Clement, I recently traveled to Indiana to sit down with Crystal Thomas to hear her story of overcoming adversity in life. From what I knew, it was a story I felt was compelling and wanted to hear more. But when I sat down with her, the details were more impactful than I ever imagined. Check it out. Crystal Thomas was born the first of five children to Victor and Natalie Thomas. Victor was a police officer. And Natalie was also a working parent. We kind of just live life as I guess any seven person household would uh, go to school, go to practices, come home. Everything was fairly, fairly simple and normal. That's the way it was for much of Crystal's childhood. Then just months before her 12th birthday, tragedy struck and the words simple and normal described anything but her life. The day started off like any normal day. My dad always took me to school. You know, I thought he was gonna go to work and I was gonna see him again that day. But my mom picked me up and then eventually we make it back to my house and there's all these media cameras in the driveway and all of our neighbors are outside and all these cop cars are in the driveway and I'm like, what is going on? And so we walk in and my mom tells us that my father had been incarcerated. And I mean, I'm 11 at the time, so I don't really know what that means. I mean, I know that he's a cop. He's supposed to be the one doing the arresting, not getting arrested. And so I went from being an 11-year-old kid to an 11-year-old adult almost overnight. Victor Thomas was arrested during a cocaine and stolen property sting and was sentenced to seven years in prison. His absence was felt in the home and as the oldest, Crystal's help was necessary. But just a few months later, the family needed her more than ever. She sat us down in the same living room in the same spot that she just had three months ago when she told us about our father being incarcerated. And she told us that she had stage four breast cancer. It stunned me. I didn't really know how to take that news. I mean, it was hard because she got diagnosed and then it was right into surgery, chemo, everything just flooded from the second that she told us. From that point, I was pretty much the leader of the household. Crystal really took on a lot. She was the oldest. She took on all the responsibilities kind of that my mom couldn't do, was too sick to do. She started driving really early. She would try and get us meals, you know, get us ready for the day. Just whatever she had to do for us, she would do it. There was days where I was just like, this can't be real. You know, this has to be a night where when I wake up, you know, life will be back to how it was. I would always pray for my mom to be healed, but eventually I knew that healing her was not gonna be earthly healing. It was gonna be for her to be let go, to go home, and to be in a comfortable place where she was no longer in pain. Natalie Thomas went to be with the Lord in January of 2006, leaving behind her five children and a husband in prison. But she also left them with a plan for hope and a new beginning. Mr. and Mrs. Luzio, tell me about this plan you guys made with Natalie that ultimately led you to have nine kids in your household. Thomas's had children the same ages as we have, so you just meet one another and, and do life together when you're in basketball. You know, I think we were actually, it was at our house, we were just sitting at the dinner table and talking, and we just told her that, you know, if anything should ever happen to her, that we would um, gladly uh, take on the five kids. She changed her will and upon her death we became the legal guardians of the kids. They probably didn't sleep that much when we all lived in there um, because they really went over and beyond to make sure that we felt welcome, that we felt loved, that we needed whatever it was. Now at the age of 16, this also meant Crystal could focus on her childhood dream to attend Duke University. And it came as no surprise to her family when they offered her a full ride scholarship to play basketball. Crystal has always kind of been her own person. We always say that she's kind of different than us because she's always kind of been the leader of the group. She has a strong personality and I think that she's always been the type of person who has known what she wants in life and has gone after it clearly because you can see where she's ended up today. Basketball for me was the one place that I knew if I was mad, I could be mad. If I was sad, I could kind of transfer the sadness into energy on the court. If I was happy, I could just go out there and enjoy playing basketball, get my mind off of whatever was going on at home and just kind of play. 
I mean, it was hard for me to go all the way to Duke and leave my siblings. But I knew at the end of the day, if I wanted to have an opportunity, say something happened and I needed to have a life for my siblings, I could do it. I could have a life for myself. You know, I was gonna put myself in a place, in a position where I could succeed in life. During her collegiate career, Crystal left her mark on Duke's record book. She became the second player to ever record 300 rebounds in a season and ranked second in career blocks in school history. But with her success came a new dream as the possibility of making it to the WNBA became a reality. When you grow up, you know, you have aspirations of playing professional basketball to play in the WNBA, and it seems like such a dream at that point. But to be here, to be the, at the end of my college career and actually have this happen, is truly a dream come true. Crystal finished her senior year in record-breaking fashion and was drafted in 2011 by the Seattle Storm and has since played for the Phoenix Mercury and overseas for teams in France, China, and Spain. But before the start of the 2014 WNBA season, Crystal was released for the third time in her career. Just like I faced hardships in my life, I'm facing hardships in my career also. But having been through the stuff that I've been in the past makes basketball challenges a little bit easier. Her dream was put on hold once again, but not over. Crystal was quickly picked up by the Indiana Fever, where she's also had the opportunity to rebuild her friendship with former Blue Devils teammate Karima Christmas. They both assure me life in the WNBA isn't easy. It's hard. You have to really kind of be mentally tough. When you're playing in the league, especially now, you know, it's you got to pick up stuff quick and you got to take what the coaches are telling you and just roll with it and try to get better every day. Since she was 11 years old, Crystal has faced many hardships most have never endured. But not only has she turned tragedy into triumph, she set an unforgettable example with her compassionate character and unshakable faith. She's someone that I can, you know, look up to. I mean, we're barely months apart in age, but it's someone that, you know, she's been through so much and you, you don't really see her, like, taking it to a point where it just brings her down, you know? It's something that she, she'll talk about and she'll be like, you know, I got through this, my siblings got through this, and I, you know, we, we prevailed over everything that went on in our lives, and it's amazing to see the progress from when I first met her till now. One of the things for me is it's an opportunity for me to inspire people around me, for me to share a story of some hard times that I went through and be able to help other people out. You know, one of the greatest highlights of my days or my weeks is if I get to talk to someone about my faith or if I get to share with someone what I went through because it's not just a thing. Like for me, it's my life. What a story. I mean, if Crystal can make it, certainly anyone can make it. And the thing that stuck out to me was the responsibility Crystal had to take on when her mom was sick and her dad got locked up. Absolutely. And the fact that she kept such a good attitude through it all as well. We actually have a photo of the Thomas family now. And Victor has since been released from prison. And from what Crystal tells me, he's done everything he possibly can to make amends and to come back into their lives. And Crystal, she's not the only Thomas that is now a pro athlete. Correct. Lauren, who I sat down with for the interview as well, uh, she used to play volleyball for Liberty, now plays professionally for a team over in Germany. And, you know, what's really interesting and maybe an underlying theme as well to this whole story is that every single one of the Thomas kids and the Deluzio kids have all found immense success in sports. I mean, that is just a talented bunch. Great job by you, Cheerston. Great story. Thank really you so captivating. Much. You told it very well. Matt, that will do it for us over here. Let's go back over to you.